Geoengineering. It's been called a catastrophe by the press, dubbed a government conspiracy by the internet, and how the quick fix for climate change by Donald Trump. But what is it actually? Well, geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's environmental processes in order to mitigate climate change. It's not a quick fix, but a mostly short-term intervention. Geoengineering encompasses a range of scientific scenarios and experiments, but the two most relevant examples are solar radiation management and ocean fertilization. Solar radiation management, or SRM, aims to reduce the amount of heat and light energy from the sun being absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Climate change is a result of atmospheric thickening due to centuries of fossil fuel combustion in order to power our society. Solar radiation is subsequently trapped within the thickened atmosphere, causing the planet to heat up. SRM stops this from happening by increasing the planet's ablation, the amount of light and heat that is reflected back into space. The most common method of SRM is the injection of sulfate particles into the highest layer of the atmosphere. These sulfate particles act as tiny mirrors, deflecting light and heat away from the surface of the planet and subsequently cooling down the Earth's atmosphere. Solar radiation management could act as a critical intervention in the vicious cycle of ice loss, a cycle which is increasing the rate of sea level rise as I speak. Increased temperatures due to climate change have resulted in a loss of ice and subsequently a loss of material available to reflect back solar radiation, causing the planet to heat further. SRM would act as the brakes in this cycle by doing the job of the already melted ice and increasing the planet's ablation. SRM could also have a positive benefit for the health of New Zealanders too. By decreasing the amount of solar radiation that reaches the surface of the Earth, it would theoretically reduce the rate of skin cancer, which is known to be caused by excess solar radiation. But, um, correctly implemented, SRM could have a massive positive impact on the natural environment. Species that are particularly affected by changing temperatures will have a more stable environment to live in, and subsequently the rate of extinction will decrease. This would particularly benefit New Zealand's ecosystems too, which are governed largely by Antarctic weather patterns. Ocean fertilisation is the addition of metals into nutrient deficient areas of the ocean in order to stimulate phytoplankton growth and reproduction. These metal nutrients are found naturally within the Earth's oceans, but just at lower concentrations. You might be wondering what all of this has to do with solving climate change. Well, phytoplankton are microscopic plants, and like plants, they're fantastic at the process of photosynthesis, the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. So the carbon dioxide that's absorbed by phytoplankton is subsequently kept out of the Earth's atmosphere and cannot contribute to climate change. In one experiment, over a 10 by 10 kilometer squared patch of oceans, scientists added iron to increase the natural concentrations. What they found was a 30 times increase in the amount of chlorophyll produced and that the phytoplankton increased in relation to the chlorophyll. The scientists calculated that the phytoplankton in their study had absorbed 100,000 kilograms of carbon. This is enough carbon fixation to offset the burning of 44,000 litres of petrol. <sighs> um, this experiment demonstrates the tangible benefits of ocean fertilisation. Fixing climate, fixing carbon is the most important thing that we can do for our Earth. And ocean fertilisation demonstrates a cheap and effective way of doing so. New Zealand has the fourth largest economic exclusive zone in the world. We are in the perfect position to be researching and possibly implementing ocean fertilisation. It's also been suggested as a method to increase fish populations, something that New Zealand's own depleted fish stocks could highly benefit from. However, it's important to know that most of the studies involving geoengineering are involving small-scale experiments or involved models, as in they are largely hypothetical at this stage. More work is needed to be done before we can understand the impacts of a large-scale geoengineering program. But New Zealand, a country which is known to be a global leader in environmental conservation and also a country which is going to be heavily affected by climate change, is in the perfect position to be funding 
and potentially implementing geoengineering. So, to conclude, climate change is the biggest threat that society will face within the next 50 years. It requires solutions that are in the long term and the short term. Undoubtedly, geoengineering is the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff approach to climate change. But the ground is rushing towards our feet as the effects of sea level rise and temperature increase can be felt today. So wouldn't it be nice to at least have an ambulance? Thank you.